Hi everyone. I've got a story to tell you which apparently is a true story. Um and a concerning story and I suppose it well yeah it does it it concerns predatory behaviour. Um male predatory behaviour in regards to women who are um not just young but can be a woman of any age but who doesn't have the experience of um mingling with youth her own age doesn't have the experience of um knowing men as friends doesn't have the experience of knowing that somebody is a predator and is targeting them. But first, I wanted to. This applies to an apostate in Islam. We all know that those two, Salah and Chantal, are. Play acting, the cosplaying. She is, and he certainly is encouraging it. Um, and no true Muslim would behave in the way either of them had. But having said that, Salah will fall back on his face, on the Islamic face when he wants to be rid of Chantal and he can quite easily do that by um, just saying that he divorces her, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. Um, but what I wanted to talk about a little bit was um, people who are apostates. So apostate is um, also called murtad. Horrible word, isn't it? M-U-R-T-A-D-D, which means one who turns away from Islam. Um, and it says not just a kafir i.e. a non-believer, but it's a particularly heinous crime. According to Islamic law, I'm reading this now, apostasy is punishable by death, imprisonment, or and or confiscation of property. Well, I think we know that Salah has got control of certain finances and is being paid a wage. Um, death, imprisonment, would you go that far? If Chantal reneges, she's already reneged. She said she doesn't pick, she's a bad Muslim. She doesn't pick the Quran up for weeks. She's not a Muslim. Can you see those two praying five times a day when they're out and about, you know, and they have to adhere to the five prayer times and they have to wash and wash their feet and they haven't even taken their prayer mats with them. They have no intention of adhering to that whilst they were in um, Thailand. So, um, conversion from Islam to another place is also considered a serious offence under Islamic law. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, he said, whoever changes his religion, deeply meaning her, I guess, 
whoever changes his religion, kill him. This seems to explicitly permit or even command Muslims to off anyone who changes his religion from Islam. So that's interesting, isn't it? As of 2021, there were 10 Muslim majority countries where apostasy from Islam was punishable by death, although executions were rare. Um, oh, that's interesting. Saudi Arabia, where I worked and where Chantal wants to visit, as though it's some sort of beach resort. It isn't. Saudi Arabia has uh, criminal statutes making it illegal for a Muslim to change religion or to renounce Islam. It's defined as apostasy and punishable by death. Saudi Arabia. I watch your step, Chantal. Very much so. I watch my step if I was you. Now here's a little story for you. Apparently true. A man, Muslim man, in the UK, thirty-one years old. And his family were keen for him to marry and they'd actually identified a girl for him to marry. The only problem being she was, let's say Iraq, I don't know the country, I can't remember. Let's say Iraq for argument's sake. So she was in Iraq and this man wanted to marry her, had agreed to marry her. So he flew over to marry this girl. Couldn't bring her back to England because it, it would have been illegal. She was 13. He's 31. She was 13. So what happened was he was going there and back, there and back. The girl became pregnant, you know, had a couple of children and when she reached 18, he could bring her to England and so he did. He brought her to England and she found a freedom that she hadn't even dreamt of. And what particularly intrigued her was Facebook. She liked to go on Facebook and made a lot of friends, both male and female. And this one person, this predator, got talking to this 18 year old mother of two who'd been married since she was 13 And um, he was chatting to her, <coughs> excuse me, saying they got sim similar interests and um, she was intrigued by him. So he said to her, look, I know that we can't really meet up, it wouldn't be right, but um, I shop in a local store um, and he didn't live far from her. He said, if you happen to be in there and we bump into each other, um, it, there's no problem, is there? You know, we know each other, we can chat. So I take it she discarded the burqa by this time also. 
and um, she went to the store and they met up and they uh, just chatted. Some of the stores have got little seats at the front where you can, you know, park your bottom while you're waiting for a taxi. So I guess they chatted and they enjoyed each other's company and um, they were in touch, you know, via Facebook and they decided to meet up again and again and again. No harm in it. They were meeting up in a store and just talking. If her husband had known, it wouldn't have gone on, would it? Anyway, from the meeting up at the store, he decided he made his next move. I'd like to take you for a meal, maybe lunch, you know, children at school. Um, just a lunch, nothing in it, just we can sit and talk. So she agreed to go to lunch with him. And again, and again. And again, that was Harriet. Excuse me a minute. She's a little darling. She just knocked something off the stairs. You know, the little baskets that you have to carry things up. Right, where was I? So she decided, they decided. They'd meet up again and again and again for lunch. She'd never known anything like it. She'd been married to a man 18 years her senior, from the age of 13, had had two children, was living um, a life where you know, her mother-in-law would interfere and her mother-in-law's word was, you know, sanctified. And uh, she was under the thumb, I suppose, wasn't she? And she got all this freedom now. And this man knew that she was vulnerable that the only man she'd ever been with was this husband, 18 years old, senior, who she'd, um, I don't think she'd met him until she married him. And so he targeted her. He wouldn't have done it to an older woman. He wouldn't have done it to any other woman who'd got a little bit of you know, street savvy. This girl, this woman. Oi! Oh, excuse me again. <laughs> She's come behind the curtain. So he targeted her. You know, she had, um, although she was older by then, you know, mid 20s, I guess. Um, her mind, they say you don't fully develop till you're in your mid-twenties, don't they? And you function on impulse and you don't think things through and I guess she didn't. The next thing was a hotel room to spend some quality time together. Um, he told her that he was in love with her, apparently. And let's grab some happiness while we can. So they got the hotel room. And that happened a couple of times. And she was caught. I don't know who's seen her, but her husband confronted her and she admitted it. She said she'd met this man. She was in love with him. That man was nowhere to be seen. He was gone. Gone. Gone off Facebook. 
gone from the face of the earth. So what was her husband supposed to do? Let's call her Fatima. What was Fatima's husband supposed to do? We've all heard of honour killings, haven't we? Can't do that in this country. Well, you can, but you serve a life sentence for it. Just don't do it. So what was he to do? Well, I guess it's still in abeyance. Because nobody knows. But apparently he's been advised to send her back to her family in Iraq, wherever they are, to send her back to her family, her blood family. He'll keep the kids and let her blood family deal with her. And that's what happens, you know. Um, there is no reconciliation in a lot of cases. There is no forgiveness. There is no understanding. There is no empathy. Um, that girl, I would imagine her shame would be a lifelong sentence. But that's not enough. That's not going to be enough. She has to lose her two children. And she has to lo lose her life in England. She has to go back to the Middle Ages. If she's lucky, that's all it will be. Burka wearing and enslavement the rest of her life, if she's lucky. If she's not lucky, who knows? And who will ever know? And that's what this um a lot of what this I was gonna say cult sex political movement, um, religion. It's more than a religion, isn't it? And Chantal Serrault is playing and she's been aided and abetted by Salah. They are disrespecting the Islamic religion. They are cosplaying. Salah is betting on um, his sponsorship to Canada. She got a ring on the hand and a couple's travel channel for what it's worth. Um, so where is that going to end up? Where? How? What's going to happen? Is he going to divorce her? Is he going to take a second wife? Because if he wants to, he can. She can't stop him. And he's got every reason to, because Chantal can't give him biological children. Their marriage, such as it was, is, is transactional. Not a real marriage. Can you imagine that in the Catholic Church, disrespecting the Catholic religion and getting married and, um, you know, <laughs> wearing a nun's costume? And that's all she's wearing is a costume. A costume. Tread carefully, Chantal. You're playing games, and so is Salah. And it's not remotely funny. 